millions of people in india may not have invested in stocks mutual funds or even bonds but they are investing in cryptocurrencies in everything from bitcoin to ethereum to solana and one of the startups or rather unicorns enabling that is coin switch kuber i have its founder and ceo ashish singhal right here with me Coin Switch, which helps retail investors invest in cryptocurrencies via an app, was founded in 2017 by Ashish Singhal, Govind Soni, and Vimal Sagar Tiwari as a global aggregator of cryptocurrency exchanges. In June 2020, it launched Kuber, an India-focused crypto investment platform. While Bitcoin is the best-known currency, Coin Switch lets users invest in dozens of other currencies as well, and has benchmarked it to the Indian rupee, with investors allowed to invest as little as 100 rupees to get exposure to the burgeoning but potentially risky asset class. It became a unicorn last year when it raised over 260 million dollars, led by new investors, Coinbase Ventures, and top Silicon Valley fund Andreessen Horowitz, or A16Z. While cryptocurrency has had a tumultuous time in India because of uncertainty over regulation, it is gaining increasing traction as an investment avenue. Coinswitch's registered user base as of 10th May 2022 is 18 million, making it one of the largest crypto platforms in the country. While 15% of its total user base comprises women, cities such as Delhi, Kolkata, Pune, Mumbai, Lucknow and Patna became the early crypto adopters. While it started with crypto, it eventually wants to become a full-fledged wealth and investment platform. Ashish you know it's quite stunning uh, you release these statistics quite often um, and there are millions of people in india not just from the metros but from the smaller cities who actually invest in crypto and this is the first investment that they've made and the average age would be what so 25 to 26 would be the average age and about hmm. say 60% of our users are coming from tier 2 and tier 3 cities But do they even understand like ये क्या है वो क्या है? They do because hmm. because of their age they are very young. We have to understand they are the Twitter first generation, right? right? right. They they born on the internet in 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 a way, right? And they 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 spend most of their time learning new technologies. They understand crypto in a way that this could be the next internet, hmm. and they want edge in their portfolio, and that is why. they come and get attracted to crypto not just because of as an investment tool but also because they feel that this could be the future uh, of the internet itself right right um the show is called bits to billions right now you are you know in the billions range but take us through the bits sure. i mean you are from meerut yes uh, tell us about your family sure. were there entrepreneurs in your family who inspired you so uh, uh, my family didn't don't have any entrepreneur so my father's side is entirely doctors okay. my mother's side is entirely engineers okay uh, so, so they wanted you to become either a doctor or an or engineer. an engineer and i'll tell you the story as well of that so uh, you know have two elder sisters uh, grown up in a middle class family uh, in meerut uh, born uh, and brought up in meerut schooling meerut uh, and at reaching in, in 11th is where you have to choose your direction right either yeah. medical or engineer yeah. or something else and i was so confused that i chose both so i have <laughs> a bio and math uh, hmm. to start with but within the first 3 months i realized that probably you know maths is something that i love hmm. right and and i thought that this is my calling and i should just pick that up and you know go for it and from there on i've gone toward the engineering path so you were uh, someone myself. who was always studious good in yes, studies yes so just like they have sharma ji ka beta like singhal yes. ji ka beta yes. that kind of so thing. i would always you know hmm. top in in my school uh, setting records of different things uh, hmm. all together and i was always inspired by my father although he is not an entrepreneur but how he has grown up how he became a doctor he he lost his father very early hmm. uh, in his life so he had a lot of responsibilities of his siblings himself you know uh, getting into college he worked odd jobs as a mechanic as as various places to pay for his study so that that standing on your two f- own two feet hmm. is is kind of comes from him right and hmm. uh, be independent uh, creating something amazing is hmm. is what uh, he has uh you know given me those qualities and i i look up to him uh, he is my obviously uh, hero uh, in in setting the path for my entrepreneurship as well 
Right. So when did the urge to start up actually begin? Because uh, you did your engineering from NSIT yes. and then you worked with Amazon for many years. Uh, then I think you tried starting up and then you went back to work and then you started up CoinSwitch again. So did you meet someone who inspired you, you know, who, I mean, who told you that, you know, maybe you should do your own thing instead of working for someone else? Yeah, so I always wanted to start something. I, I didn't know it was called entrepreneurship. I today even, uh, I don't know if I can spell it uh, even, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I always had that urge to create something. I was always a creator, I was always building things, even in my childhood. But when I actually saw Google, that's where I realized the power of the internet. Mm. How such a simple thing, just uh, uh, you know, input bar can give you access to the entire internet, right? And that actually gave me uh, gave me an idea that you know I have to start something on the internet, and this is this is what I have to create something which is so simple yet so powerful, right? Mm. And then Steve, uh, learning about Steve Jobs. I know it's a cliche now, uh, creating dent in the universe, but I've always lived by that and maybe someday I will end up creating, creating a, a dent, dent in, in the, the universe. universe. Yeah, but okay, internet is fine. So why not e-commerce, why not edtech, food tech, uh, why crypto? L let me tell you a bit about myself and then probably you'll understand why crypto. Uh, so apart from working in companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Zynga, leading a lot of their product and tech, uh, interesting thing about three of us, the co-founders, is that we are all hackers. So any hackathon in India that you can think of, uh, we would have won it, uh, including Sequoia Hack, Google Code for India, People LinkedIn Hack. People better watch out, Ashish. <laughs> <laughs> ethical hacker. Ethical hacker. Okay. I have an ethical hacker. So, hmm. uh, and that's how you know we used to uh, spend a lot of time on Reddit, on, on different places, on the internet, learning about new tech, build, so that we can build new and cool stuff, right? And that's how we came across Bitcoin White Paper. Being the engineers that we are, introverts that we are, uh, Bitcoin, and the blockchain seem like the place for engineers, hmm. right? Where code dictates what happened rather than people dictates what happened, hmm. right? So for us, uh, actually code is reality. For, for every engineer, uh, what a person says may not hold true, but what a code says will always hold true, right? So that's how we got into crypto and that's how we got attracted to the entire blockchain and the crypto space. Hmm. You know, again, the CoinSwitch journey itself has been interesting. You started out as an aggregator to check. I remember one quote you said, you said it was supposed to be a hack and it became a company. Yes. That, that, that's an interesting uh, statement to make, sure. Ashish. So when was it a hack and when did it become sure. a company? So uh, back in 2016, uh, obviously we were interested into crypto, but at that point there were not a lot of opportunities to do something in crypto. You must have read the famous white paper. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right, And mm. that's where we realized that, uh, you know, it's a new way, it's a new word altogether, where mm. code dictates what happened. Not and people for dictate. an engineer, code is sacrosanct. Is sacrosanct. And mm. uh, the engineers that we are, the introverts that we are, mm. we obviously love code uh, more or trust code a bit more uh, always, right? And that's where our fascination for the crypto industry started. Mm. Uh, interesting story, in 2015, I, when I started my first company, I wanted to start in the crypto ecosystem itself. But Bitcoin went through an, a crash of 10x at that yeah. point. And everyone that I would meet and say, oh, this is probably the worst performing <laughs> asset uh, that you yeah. get started. And I was an engineer, I didn't know too much. So I wanted to start a company where I could learn uh, the fundamentals as well and that's where I, I went away from crypto at that point but crypto always remained with me. Mm. So me, Govan, Vimal started trading crypto, starting investing into crypto mm. back in 2015-16 uh, and we realized that the price of a crypto used to vary across exchanges because it's based on supply and demand, right? Yeah. So on one exchange you will find Bitcoin to Ethereum, one Bitcoin equal to 10 Ethereum, on another you'll find one Bitcoin equal to say 11 mm. Ethereum, mm. right? And we wanted to get the best price when we were trading. So we built a hack where uh, our algorithm will bring prices from different exchanges, tell us where to trade at what point in time, so that we are always ahead than anyone out there. And we made that public, realizing that, oh, if it's our problem, it might be the problem of maybe some more people, right? And we launched it in, I think, June of 2017. Within a month, we were doing million dollars GMV a day. Hmm. while we were working at uh, hmm. you know other companies and 
we realized that our revenue was more than the companies we were working at at that <laughs> time and that's where we thought that probably it's the time to start this as a as formally as as a so company so that was coins which 1.0 i think the 2.0 happened in july 2020 when you launched kuber exactly. for indians who want to kind of invest in crypto like if i want to buy bitcoin i can just go to your app yes. and Yes. do it and i think that was a game changer as well Absolutely. because you have now what 15 million 18, 18. today as we said we have 18 mm -hmm. million users so back in 2017 the idea was that oh this was a hack but we also wanted to simplify crypto hmm. you don't have to go to exchanges understand complicated graphs and order books even then and get into crypto very very quickly and easily hmm. but at that point uh, simplicity obviously is 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 not objective uh, yeah. what is simple for you might be difficult for me right mm. so we defined our simplicity is that the moment our parents buy crypto we know that we have made it simple have enough. your parents brought crypto so i'll i'll complete <laughs> this story uh, so in 2020 after the rbi ban got reverted we got the opportunity to come to india and that's where we are working started working on that mission mm. to simplify crypto today's retail user is used to the experience of swiggy zomato one click food ordering so you wanted to be the swiggy of crypto we wanted to be as simple as swiggy right hmm. and uh, cab booking is single click we wanted crypto to be that but crypto in 2020 was very complex complicated order books graphs on exchanges hmm. uh, sometimes even i've been in crypto for like 8 9 years now sometimes i would buy instead of sell or sell instead <laughs> of buy because it it was so complex experience hmm. right and that's where coinswitch kuber originated making it as simple as ordering food online right hmm. a click of a button away to buy and sell any crypto starting with just rupees 100 and within the week of us launching is where my mom did kyc without even telling me and you know bought her first bitcoins and wow. that was one of the proudest moment uh, so you got your mom to buy uh, bit, uh, bitcoin I didn't ask her to buy <laughs> and she did it on her own and I hmm. think that was more fascinating hmm. my father in the same week bought as well hmm. and uh, because obviously he is 70 years old his pan has a mismatch in the name he had to create a ticket to get his kyc done it was all done smooth for him and then he was able to buy as well so within a week or two both my parents ended up buying bitcoin so your parents are holding to their portfolio or holding yes, their yes, portfolio yes, they are yes. tell us about your crypto portfolio so are you big on bitcoin ethereum solana cardano what are your sure. or even the meme coins <laughs> So uh, before I say something, obviously everyone should do their own research yeah. uh, before investing, and this Definitely. is not an investing advice. Yeah. Uh, when we started, there was only Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, as the OGs of of crypto, and uh, that's why our thesis has always been a sixty forty, sixty percent Bitcoin and forty percent uh, Ethereum. It has evolved over the time. Now there are some of the amazing projects that are coming in. So the thesis is now fifty forty ten. So and 50 is Bitcoin, 40, 40 is, is Ethereum, Ethereum and, and 10. 10 is other coins. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, to be honest, don't invest in meme coins so much. I invest in projects that I feel could be, you know, the next blockchain, the level, the layer two, the layer threes, uh, mm -hmm. or the even layer ones. Uh, so other layer ones. So Matic and Solana. Solana and, and Avalanche and and uh, mm -hmm. places mm -hmm. like these. But obviously, these are risky uh, projects. They right. still have yet, uh, you know, a lot to prove. You know, when I look at crypto entrepreneurs in India, I almost feel like you know they need nine lives, or you know they need nerves of steel, mm -hmm. because something or the other keeps happening. You know, you're constantly operating. Will I? Will my business exist tomorrow? I'm just you know one circular away from either being shut down or losing my trading volumes. So your BP and all is normal. I mean, <laughs> how do you manage? No, hmm. I think uh, amazing question, right? And 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 this is true for all entrepreneurs, but for crypto entrepreneurs, this is on the edge. Uh, yeah, you're uh, always like uh, on right. the edge. So yeah. uh, I think the opportunity that we get to innovate in this space uh, is obviously higher than other spaces, right? And I think with that opportunity comes a bit of negative sides as well. So, as a crypto entrepreneur, now I've been in this space for five years. I've seen uh, China banning crypto in 2017, RBI circular. I've seen multiple crashes of Bitcoin. So, we have gone through all these cycles, and I, I think the market has prepared us uh, for this journey quite well. It's tough. Uh, every day is a challenge. I don't know if we have ever gone through a quarter with what we decided to do and ended up doing the same because things churn uh, very quickly. What do you tell market. your employees? Because yeah. I'm sure they must be like, "Arey Ashish, you know, RBI is saying this, SEBI is saying this, FM is saying this." Uh, what do you? Yeah. So yeah. there is definitely. So the kind of people that we hire are believers, right? Hmm. Uh, and they 
they know that the opportunity that we have in front of us is much bigger. These small challenges would keep on happening. So uh, like I always say, it might feel like a marketing line, but CoinSearch is not just building a company, it is building an industry. So the mm. things that we do today here would be the norm of the industry going forward. CoinSwitch founders are all engineers who are passionate about coding and technology, having participated in a series of hackathons across India. After working in leading global firms such as Amazon, Microsoft, Accenture and Zynga, they started up together in June 2017. Okay. So, we are in conversation with all three founders of uh, CoinSwitch, Ashish of course, Vimal and Govind. The good news is I am not meeting them in Dubai where <laughs> everybody in crypto and Web3 seems to be there these days but right here in Bengaluru. So, Ashish, why are so many people moving to Dubai and hopefully you guys have no such plans, you are going to be right here in India yes. building CoinSwitch. So, let me first address the second part. Uh, we are here, we will be here. Uh, we are building an industry, like I've said multiple times, and for that to happen, we have to be here and for all its goods and bads, uh, we have to figure out how do we build this industry in India, not just for ourselves, but for the entire crypto and the Web3 community. Why so many people are going outside mm -hmm. is, is because of clarity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, crypto is a space where innovation is endless. It's just getting started. A lot of entrepreneurs are excited about building in this space but they obviously cannot function uh, with uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And what the products that they are building are like the infrastructure, the HTTP, uh, the TCP mm -hmm. of the internet itself, right? So uh, it's a global product in the making. And that's why they find it much easier in other countries where some regulation, some clarity is there. Even with this 30% tax, 1% TDS, there mm -hmm. is still uncertainty or has that perhaps sure. driven more people um, away? I think that impacts traders uh, more than innovators uh, mm -hmm. per se, but definitely yes. If somebody is building say an NFT marketplace and it has to build a different marketplace for India because he has to take care of TDS versus a global marketplace and the intermingling cannot happen because of the TDS structure, then might be building outside might be a better uh, you know, solution uh, for that. Right. Vimal, how tough is it to find talent? I mean, people are lured to all different countries and then even here you have to fight with other crypto startups, with the hyperscalers, with you know your internet behemoths. How do you guys manage? So earlier it used to be difficult when we started in our early days, but currently it's not that difficult, even though uh, uh, we, we, we are figuring out. But uh, now since we have a clarity, uh, people are able to figure out Web3 is the future. We are building the industry here. We are building the uh, next gen internet, the, like, the next version of the internet. So now people want to work on the cutting edge technology who are interested in that. But Govind, you know, one constant complaint that we see from users, uh, from investors is, you know, on tech issues, on complaints not getting resolved in time. And other exchanges we speak to say that, you know, they would love to invest more in tech, more in product, but uh, they are just so distracted by all the noise around policy, what the government is saying, what the regulators are saying. So, you know, does that come in the way of user experience, product experience, you know, do you sometimes wish there were lesser distractions from other corners. Yeah, definitely. So th there's definitely a part of external factors which impacts your priorities, which impacts to focus on the part of hmm. some of the customer facing items, right? At the same time, what you have learned over a period of time is that these noises would be there. Hmm. We have to figure out a way to work with them. It's part of the uh, It's part way. of the journey, mm -hmm. right? And it's part of, as per then learning that is essentially the way it modeled us or the way it changed for us is that we tried to make sure that the team is aligned towards the same goal, right? Hmm. We keep re-emphasizing on the same mission statement, same focus on that, that these will continue to happen. It will take time, it will settle. Don't worry about it. It's not nothing to uh, focus on those ones, right? Because that distraction is huge. Hmm. Every few days we know that something or other <laughs> will come as a blast and yeah. <laughs> suddenly take your attention towards it. Yeah. So that's been focus, focus yeah. on that. So although there are distractions out there and how we have structured our team to deliver, still deliver user value first is that we don't optimize for 100% of our team's bandwidth. We only optimize for 80. Right. 
Ashish, uh, is this perhaps one of the toughest phases for coin switch Kobay since the time you started? Because mm -hmm. there are like many things happening at once, right? Uh, you have the 30% tax, you have the 1% TDS, mm -hmm. then you have the UPI issue where you know banks are kind of halting UPI payments. What impact has this had on your business? So I wouldn't say this is the toughest. Uh, to be honest, this is probably one of the better parts of the uh, <laughs> okay. years. That's saying uh, something. <laughs> uh, we have seen RBI ban. We have seen uh, China uh, banning and you know market crashing. We have seen multiple, hmm. uh, even worse situations uh, than this. I think today where we stand is much better. Uh, at least the CEO recognizing in the budget as virtual digital assets, separating currency use case to CBDC, having that clarity is is, is very so welcome. So at least it's a path it's a to path making to, something. Yes, right. Taxation we mm. know it's it's a bit higher. One percent mm. TDS definitely uh, could be you know a, a bit of a negative turn for the in, entire industry, and thirty percent is definitely higher. And we expect that over time this would be equated to other asset classes like stocks and securities and our taxation would come down, but it's just the matter of evolution. Do you think a consolidation is inevitable? Um, like, you know, because of all these pressures, mm -hmm. not all exchanges will be able to survive. So consolidation will happen, not just because of these uh, circumstances, but also because uh, of the market conditions itself, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we have seen a lot of, uh, you know, downturns and the beer uh, and bull market cycles in crypto, and these would ine inevitably happen again and again, right? What we have seen in the, these cycles is good companies stay and do better and better. Hmm. Uh, companies who haven't figured out their fundamentals, who haven't figured out their business models, usually merge or shut down in those phases. Right? So it kind of separates the wheat from the shaft. Yes, exactly. And and uh, we have seen two cycles already and we have survived uh, those well. Coinbase has seen, seen three. And that's where you see good companies coming out who survive these cycles. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely a consolidation and uh, that would happen over the period of time. But you would also see amazing companies emerging like Matic emerged from that 2017 crash. We emerged from that 2017 crash, right? So you definitely see good companies like Facebook emerged from yeah. uh, the dot com uh, bubble, right? So you will definitely see amazing companies coming out as well. Right. Finally, do you guys still get time to hang out with each other? I mean, you've yes. known each other for 15 <laughs> yes. years, you know, right from your uh, college days. So do you still get time no, I think to spend? Almost every week we are hanging out, uh, <laughs> right? And uh, although working and then probably <laughs> hanging out, but uh, hanging out. Uh, so lines could be blurry at yeah. times, yeah. but yeah, we do. <laughs> so what do you guys generally do when you all meet on weekends? So going out at times, playing cards at home, being with family, everyone's family together, uh, having barbecue nights at times. <laughs> so different, different uh, flavor to the, <laughs> the mix. Nice. And sometimes we just sit and talk. Right? About work? About life most of the time. <laughs> okay. uh, figuring out, you know, uh, how the life has changed, how, how it has evolved and where we are going. How can we do better? Coinsurge has grown from, you know, nobody knowing us in the last two years, today, multi-billion dollar company. And in that phase, we all have to step up uh, time and time again. finished product Ashish are you going to you know mint an NFT out of this is that the plan <laughs> someday so that actually is so let me tell you the story and you know I'm very bad at art I actually can't <laughs> see that's pretty good so uh, I still remember the days of my engineering college engineering drawing was the was the subject that I dread and I'm very bad at it and it has given me nightmares even today sometimes I have those nightmares uh, so the idea was that once the NFT got introduced and the whole uh, artist ecosystem started adopting to NFTs. I thought of, uh, obviously, as CoinSwitch, we want to get into NFT space as well. So that's an ambition. That's an ambition, right? So, uh, and I thought that, okay, uh, while my team is building that product, why not I be the first user of that product? User, creator. User, creator, right? So, uh, and that's where me and my wife loves uh, painting. So we together, and this is an exercise that we do together as well, is uh, creating uh, this painting, creating uh, uh, graffiti, uh, art and then converting into an NFT, probably the first creator on our own platform. So when is that happening? When is uh, the NFT <laughs> marketplace? Probably or the soon. NF 
probably soon and uh, it's it's going to be a different product uh, launch and we'll keep you posted on that but the idea is that i want to be the first user of my own product and see how it functions and how it can help uh, the entire nft community and sell this uh, as probably one of the nfts donate the money that i receive and the person buying it receives the physical art as well right so so that's that's so this where is like total skin in the game exactly <laughs> approach <laughs> yes. but apart from nft uh, ashish you know coins which how is it going to evolve yeah. because you've also spoken in the past about how it's not going to just be crypto it's going to be well tech fintech yeah. so can we see you entering stocks mutual funds wealth advisory is that a yes. big so that's the plan right mm. uh, india with a population of uh, over 100 crore you see only 1% or less than 1% of indians investing beyond fixed deposits uh, the idea is how do we democratize uh, investment in india mm. uh, and make money equal for all and that's our mission uh, crypto obviously serves that purpose to an extent uh, and the new finance and old finance need to merge together to create a better financial ecosystem for mm. the middle class for for everyone in india and i come from middle class so i can relate to the struggles uh, of the middle class uh, where we didn't had money to pay school fees or college fees and i wouldn't be here if the people in my life didn't help me uh, overcome those challenges so the idea is how do we be the helping hand be the platform of choice where people can actually grow their money the, with the opportunities say the hnis has in india how can we democratize it and spread it across to everyone in india right the other big trend is metaverse and you know this is where things are going to converge yeah. nfts and crypto is going yeah. to be like you know the currency there yes. so how do you see it evolving what role can coin switch sure, play sure. will it play a bridge role perhaps yes. between web 2 web 3 yes so exactly right so hmm. coin switch is actually a bridge between web 2 and web 3 companies a user in the metaverse doesn't need to know uh, you know which blockchain it is built on what token to pay in that metaverse how to interact uh, with different functions that metaverse ideally a coin switch uh, login would be the perfect entry into the metaverse he can still pay with fiat for anything that he does in metaverse any experience that he want to enjoy in metaverse without worrying about blockchain cryptos and be a very simple interface uh, mm -hmm. that we want to be and coin switch would be that gateway if you have to give us two big trends that you see going forward for uh, that you know coin switch can take advantage of what will it be will it be lending will it be uh, something else sure. for, uh, in sure. terms of the big picture going so forward so i think uh, the biggest thing that we should end up solving if we want to democratize finance is decision making hmm. today if you buy a say a tesla stock it is up 10% hmm. user still doesn't know whether to sell it or to buy more of it hmm. uh, because he come into the investing ecosystem through friends and family he learns he's very active uh, hmm. but he doesn't know how to take further decisions right and i think that decision making is what paralyzes him in taking further action learning more about finance it's very daunting hmm. it's not been taught in schools and colleges right so how do we create a platform which can educate people have a bouquet of investment options and helping them understand how to go about investment right Got so it. end to end journey and this is the example that we take today we are a crypto company we are now moving towards an edtech company where we become we make financial education much easier before we become a fintech company right on that note thank you so much ashish for taking time out and talking to us and here's wishing you the best and hopefully we will see coins which evolving from crypto to edtech to wealth tech to fintech and you know whatever broad ambitions you have you. going forward thanks thanks for inviting me thank you